I've been in London over a month by this point, and I've finally settled into life in a city that's about 13 times bigger than Washington, D.C., and seven times as old. And I have to say that I don't feel as out of place here as I thought I would. It's not exactly the same as Washington, but I have nowhere near that sense of stranger in a strange land that I thought I would. And I'm not really sure why. It could be my complete and unashamed obsession with everything in British media that has ever existed ever, but I'd like to believe the British culture is something too complex to understand by sitting staring at a TV all day. And while I may not understand that, I do have a firm grasp on my day-to-day life, and I can share that with you. This is the courtyard of Dinwiddie House, where I'm staying. It's a pretty nice place, but most of the people here are freshmen, and you don't notice how much you grow as a person until you look back at what you were. Easily excitable, and with no concept of the phrase, all things in moderation. This is King's Cross Station, important to most of the world because it's the setting for part of the Harry Potter series, but important to me because it's the closest underground station. I haven't even been to Platform 9 and 3 quarters yet, Because something of the excitement gets lost when you can walk to a place you've been dreaming of visiting all your life in under 10 minutes. This is Chapel Market, where I try to buy most of my groceries, not because I'm super hipster, or because I like buying things while standing outside in the cold, but because it's cheaper than everything in the grocery stores around here, which is ridiculously expensive. This is Vernon Square campus of SOAS, where I only have one class at 9 a.m. on Monday morning. I like it because it's right next to my dorm so I don't have to trek a mile, and because the class that I take there is taught by one of the most brilliant people I've ever met in my life, Dr. Lala Khalili. The class is gender and politics, and if I ever manage to wrap my mind around all the things she's taught me, I'll write a nice long post about it. This is Russell Square campus, where I have the rest of my classes. There's ethnomusicology of the Near Middle East, um, ethnography of the Middle East, and government and politics of the Middle East. I am sure that you are noticing a trend here. This is a statue that is in nearly every single promotional picture of SOAS that I have never seen in person. This is Russell Square itself, which I like because it allows the British Museum to be right next to Russell Square campus. This is St. George's Garden, which I walk through to get to school most days. I think it has some sort of deeper meaning because it used to be a graveyard and now is a dog park, but I haven't quite decided what that means yet. It's still surreal to watch people walk their dachshunds next to the grave markers of the long dead, but it kind of lessens with time. You don't get surprised by it anymore. There's also a lot going on culturally in London, and some of us went to the National Television Awards. It was loud and big and required a lot of screaming and involved being in the same room as Martin Freeman, so I think it was worth it. One of my favorite things about London is the theater culture in the city, which a friend and I partook of last night when we went to go see the play The Effect, starring Billy Piper. The building is the glowy thing in the distance. And as you're about to hear my friend, also conveniently named Alyssa, explain, it was pretty amazing. So, what did we just do? We just went and saw the effect with Billy Piper. And and that one dude from Doctor Who. And that one dude who was in the Unicorn of the Lost from Doctor Who, who we thought was Vincent Van Gogh, but was not actually Vincent Van Gogh. No, and also admittedly, the Unicorn and the Lost, not the best Doctor Who episode ever. As usual, my life is a push and pull between intellectualism and mindless fangirling over science fiction shows. This is not a new development since I've gotten to London. Anyways, the point of tonight, the play, was amazing! It was absolutely amazing. Just everything about it was wonderful. It was a small little theater, and we were standing sort of on the edges, and it was in the center, and everyone was standing around the performance as it was happening. It was sort of like shockingly intimate. It was like super mild.
mind bending. Yeah, right? super what? mind bending. Like, and it was what's real? What matters? Does it matter if it's real? And it was a great rumination on like love and depression and illness versus just what we are normally as humans and what's chemical. And, and like the reduction of the idea of normal. Yes. And the reduction of the idea of emotions. Emotions are sort of been reduced to just chemical interactions and nothing more and how we struggle to keep mystery in. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm learning a lot from my time in London. And because this isn't for school, I don't have to put a conclusion on it. So I'll just say goodbye.